30 points per game in the playoffs, average career high in points and rebounds in the regular season, 20 years young in his prime, two finals MVPs, two-time defensive player of the year, Kawhi Leonard, the most sought-after free agent in this year's class. There's a reason we're all on Kawhi Watch. Let's welcome in Sean Powell, senior writer for NBA.com. Hey, I know there was an earthquake out west. Hope you're safe. A lot of players were tweeting about their feeling in Vegas. It registered a six on a Richter scale in L.A. Where were you when it happened? Well, I was here at my apartment, and at first I thought it was the vibration caused by everyone banging their head up against the table because Kawhi Leonard hasn't signed yet. Uh, but then I quickly figured out, oh, yeah, this is an earthquake. And uh, the good news for the Clippers and Lakers is that Kawhi is from around these parts, and so he's probably used to this sort of thing. But me, on the other hand, not so much. I get what you're saying. An earthquake is not going to deter the Lakers or the Clippers or Kawhi Leonard. I know you spent most of your Independence Day on Kawhi Watch. We're trying to figure out where he's going. When is it going to be over, though, is the first question. When do you anticipate that happening? Well, nobody knows, and no one's saying anything. And Kawhi's camp is keeping it pretty tight, which I respect, by the way. Uh, but I would be surprised if this lasts beyond, say, next Monday. I think this weekend sounds about right. Uh, but then again, we've been saying that for a while now. Kawhi is just a guy who's uh, full of surprises and not much on sound. So we'll all just sit back and see what, what happens and when it happens. Okay, so the three teams in the Kawhi sweepstakes, Lakers, Clippers, Raptors, all hoping for the best. Uh, who do you think is going to land them? You know, it's hard to say because they all have a good reason to, to, to get Kawhi. I mean, if you're Kawhi, you see something appealing in all three places. The Lakers can align you with two other all-stars and load management comes into play there because they don't need you to play for, what, maybe 50, 60 games. You get a lot of rest. With the Clippers, you're just missing that one piece. And in, and in there, you are a singular star, pretty much the way you were in Toronto. And you've got a great coach in Doc Rivers, uh, great ownership, Steve Ballmer and Jerry West, uh, you know, is part of that front office situation. So that's a good situation. And this team, by the way, without a superstar, won 48 games and played the, the Warriors pretty tight in the first round. Uh, but then there's Toronto. You know, again, you won a championship with them. You know, I guess it would be pretty good to go back and run it back. You've got pretty much the same core and the country will be all behind you. So for Kawhi, it's a tough decision. I can understand why he's taking this long to make that decision. It's not easy. And besides, this is the first time he will decide his destination. The Spurs drafted him. He didn't have that choice. And then the Spurs traded him to Toronto. He didn't have that choice. This time he has a choice. So we understand Kawhi's perspective. What's the plan for each of these teams if they don't land him? Well, the Lakers would probably be in the best situation because they have two Kawhis. They've got LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So it's not like they'll be short on superstars. What they have to do basically is fill out the rest of their roster. Um, they need shooters, they need defenders, and they need ball handlers. And they also only have the room exception. And basically after that, it's just minimum contracts. So you figure Bajan Rondo will be in play, maybe DeMarcus Cousins, JaVale McGee, bringing him back. Uh, also, I would say Danny Green, maybe here's a guy who can help out with the shooting and also with defense. Uh, but I also think the ace card here is a guy they already have on a team, and that's Kyle Kuzma. I would really, if I'm the Lakers, really try to um, improve him, you know, put him in position where he can, you know, take the next step and be like a borderline all-star. As far as the Clippers, uh, look, I mean, they basically spent this entire year setting up the table for Kawhi. If he doesn't join them at the table, then they simply run it back. Again, they won 48 games last year. I think they will go after uh, Jermichael Green, a guy who played well for them last year. He's out there. But they've got $32 million to spend. They're not going to spend it recklessly. They'll just wait for the next opportunity. And finally, Toronto, I think they'd still be a playoff team because they bring everybody back except Kawhi. I don't, I'm not so sure they'll be a title contender. Uh, but they can build around Pascal Siakam. Basically, here's a guy who will get more touches. He'll probably see, you know, an increase in scoring. And, and he can fulfill that sort of go-to role. Um, but the big thing with Toronto is next summer. 
Because then you've got Marcus Gasol, his contract is up. Kyle Lowry's contract is up. Serge Ibaka's contract is up. So I think they would stay the course this season without Kawhi. But then the following summer, they've got some big decisions to make on how they basically come up with a new personality for that team. Sean Powell on Kawhi Watch this July 4th. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Anytime. Click the subscribe button, like, share, comment, and tap the notification bell. Thank you.